I, I think you know, traveling is something that for the holidays uh, is something that is important. It's something that we all, I think, do to some degree. And trying to just abstain from visiting friends and loved ones for several years in a row, uh, while perhaps the safest approach is not realistic. And so I, I like to think of this all as various layers of protection. You know, what, what can we do to help ourselves and to help those around us? And so the, you, you've already talked about the most important thing I think that's out there, which is to get vaccinated. If you are eligible to get vaccinated um, or to get a, a third dose or to get a booster, depending on your specific scenario, uh, I think we should do that. Try to get the maximum amount of protection that we can get from the vaccine. Uh, as you've alluded to, people under the age of five are the current group that just doesn't have a vaccine available to them. So they will not be vaccinated. And you have to think of that as you plan your holidays. Uh, people that are between that five to 12 year old range uh, probably will at best have only gotten one shot before the holidays. And, and actually some of them still wouldn't have gotten any shots, even if they want to get them. It's the vaccine is, um, because it's just gone live throughout the entire country, just like we saw when it first went live with people in general. There's just not enough vaccine and not enough people to give them to meet the demand that's out there. Uh, that will equilibrate over the next several weeks, but for the time being, going into Thanksgiving, it's just uh, you're going to have kids that may have gotten one shot versus no shot, um, and then the younger kids who can't get any shot. And then, of course, you have the people that have a weakened immune system or are less likely to respond to a vaccine. So even if they got it fully, may or may not have the level of protection that we would like them to have. Uh, and then thrown in there is another la layer of the people that uh, even though they're fully vaccinated, they did everything they can, they're the ones that are at higher risk of something happening to them if they were to get COVID that you may also want to protect. Um, so I get a lot of questions from my colleagues about elderly family members or somebody with cancer or, or you know, some scenario like that. And just what what can you do? And then the last part of this are the people that have chosen not to get vaccinated that are that are eligible. And they may be there, especially as you get to these larger family gatherings. Uh, you uh, will likely encounter someone that has just chosen not to do it for whatever reason. And they may or may not tell you. Uh, as family members are wont to do. So uh, this creates a, a dynamic where, you know, you, you kind of do what you can. So as I said, first and foremost, be fully vaccinated as best you can. I think the next thing is, is know your audience, know who you're going to be with. See if you can't plan. If you know there's somebody who is really, uh, you know, has not gotten vaccinated, should they be at the party? Should they be in a different part of the party? Is there a way that you would treat them differently? Um, if you have somebody who is has one of these conditions that puts them at higher risk or has uh, an immune weakening condition such that they may not have responded to the vaccine fully, again, do you treat that situation differently? Um, and really trying to just come up with a scenario that lets you all enjoy the holidays safely. So part of this goes to the travel component. How are you going to get there? Um, if you were to take a plane, then you are going to be uh, wearing a mask, at least while you're in the uh, screening areas. Um, and if not, you'll be getting talked to by a flight attendant. And we know how that's been going recently. So uh, it's probably worth just wearing the mask and not trying to fight with everyone. Uh, but that gives you some protection. But you're you're still you're you're in an airport you're in a crowded place you're on a train where there's lots of people around you that itself is a risk and so being diligent wearing your mask while you're traveling is is a good thing to do or you can kind of come up with a smarter way to travel um, so how i'm going to travel for the holiday season will be in a car um, so that i'm not going to be putting myself or my my loved ones in that environment where i've potentially been exposed in the travel process that's realistic for me, that is not realistic for people that are traveling longer distances. And so as again, it's just trying to create as safe a path as you can. A lot of my colleagues who are particularly worried about going to see a loved one with a condition, they'll often test themselves before they go and testing is pretty easily available in the community at this point. That's something you can consider. Uh, the CDC does recommend it for those who are not fully vaccinated. Uh, they actually, officially, the CDC says, try not to travel unless you're fully vaccinated. But if you must and you're not, then you can get tested before. 
Uh, and then if you arrive at your destination and you're still very concerned, you could get tested again. Um, that is uh, officially recommended by the CDC for people who are not fully vaccinated. Um, it's recommended for everyone coming back from international travel. Uh, but you can you can do that at a clinic, at, at the county testing sites. You can buy the antigen test from the drugstore these days. They're all they're all reasonable ways to try to assess. You know, could you have COVID now? And obviously, mm -hmm. if you're feeling sick, if you have a positive COVID test, don't travel, don't go to family events, kind of hunker down at home, um, and there'll be another holiday for you to go and enjoy. You know, it, it comes back to that layers of protection and it's how aggressive does the wearer want to be or the person is there, you know, they're going to wear a mask versus the people that you're with. Um, realistically, if you were to wear a mask, it would be safer. But I think most people, especially with small groups of loved ones, unless they're concerned about someone who isn't vaccinated or, or may not respond as well, are probably not going to wear the mask. Uh, and so it it's it really comes down to your layer of protection or concern. Uh, if you are somebody who feels that they're at high risk of potentially getting COVID, even though you're fully vaccinated and you're worried about spreading it, wear the mask. Um, I think that's the easiest thing to do. Uh, the other option, of course, is to try to get tested uh, before uh, the get together to see if there's anything else there. Mm -hmm. But if you are vaccinated, if the people around you are vaccinated, the risks come down considerably. And so the risk that you would have picked it up on top of your vaccination is lower. The risk that even if you did, that you would spread it to the other people is lower. And so depending on your risk level, you may decide that that's okay. Go home. You know, the, the tests that are out there now are, uh, especially if you're buying them at a drugstore, they're more reputable uh, than they were early on in the pandemic when we had a lot of questionable tests that were uh, coming into the market. Uh, the, the ones that are there now, I think, are, are pretty reliable and could be used to look for that. And they're easy to do. They don't cost that much. They're quick. You can do it at home. You don't have to go anywhere. Outdoors are better than indoors, right? Air, so the, the short version to this is ventilation matters. Uh, it will increase or decrease the risk depending on how much is there. But then you still get to the, what you're alluding to, having all the windows open is cold. Um, here in the Pacific Northwest, eating outside at Thanksgiving, depending on the forecast, may or may not be good. I, I believe it's gonna rain is the current forecast here. Um, that would be a safe bet anyway, even if it doesn't say that. Um, and so in that scenario, Realistically, can you eat outdoors? Probably not. Could you eat there with the windows open and your coats on? Probably. Uh, it, it, again, it's it's risk prevention. Risk. It's trying to decide what is the real risk that's happening there. Again, if you have people that are higher risk, um, that they either didn't react to the vaccine, they didn't take the vaccine for some reason, they're elderly, they have some other condition, then in that population, you say, well. Do I feel comfortable sitting there with the windows closed and a bunch of people in the room? You know, maybe, maybe not. Uh, if you know everyone, you trust them, they've, they've been vaccinated. I think realistically, most people are going to choose to have the meal with their masks off and the windows closed just for comfort. Uh, I think that's safe if, you know, all those statements are met. But you know yourself better if you know that there's someone in the, in the group, like let's say you have an infectious disease doctor coming over for Thanksgiving a Thanksgiving meal who sees COVID patients most days of the week. Um, it may change your your calculus of what you want to do. And then maybe then it does make sense to have the windows open. Or, or I could hazard, if I were the one there putting people at risk, maybe I would sit further away and wear a mask versus having everyone keep the windows open. But there's all these permutations of what you can do. Um, the key to this is, if everyone is vaccinated, you don't need to be quite as compulsive as we would have been last year in this scenario. Um, but there's always risk and it's really what you're comfortable with yourself. I mean, there are people who at this point are like, I'm fully vaccinated, they're vaccinated, I'm done, we're, we're behaving normally. And then there are people that are still extremely worried for uh, because of their health condition or they just are worried uh, who will still practice a maximal amount of protection. And then there's the, people that are in, in the middle. And so again, knowing your audience, you want everyone, or at least if it's my holiday party, I want everyone there to feel comfortable um, uh, and behave in a way that will allow people to have fun.
we're still kind of we're all hot spots here the yeah. um if if you if everyone was coming from and or an area that doesn't have a lot of covid then i don't think you need to do as much uh, there aren't that many parts of the us that that's true however and as we we know case rates are starting to go up again uh, and so here in the Pacific Northwest, we're still on the downswing from our last surge. Uh, you know, Pierce mm -hmm. County remains in the highest level of transmission on the CDC ranking. Uh, and so it's it's true, if we didn't have a lot of COVID in the community, you wouldn't have to worry about it because the chance of, of it spreading is low. But unfortunately for us right now, that's that's not us. Uh, and I do have a worry as we if trends hold true from last year, even though we're coming down now towards Thanksgiving, the holiday reflecting reality. People are getting close together again. The rates will go up uh, and then coming into Christmas and New Year's and the rest of the holidays, you may see that we're at a higher level than we are now going into it. But if we magically, the cases go away, I think it would be a different discussion. It'll show us what's going to happen here. And, and a lot of what we think about, and at least in, in my world, is how how do we move forward with with COVID? You know, I, it doesn't seem like vaccination is going to be the end all be all to get us free of the pandemic. I think it, it's very helpful. Um, and so I, I don't want to minimize it at all. However, uh, even with vaccination rates that are fairly high, say where I am in King County, we still see a good amount of COVID. Mm -hmm. uh, and so moving forward, how, how do we learn to live with it? And I think it's it's a lot of this kind of common sense, trying to be safe, protect those around you. You know best the people that you're gonna be with, what are the layers of protection that you wanna do? Um, and then we need to find a path forward to living our lives.